Hi everyone. I just got both of my bows rehaired. Well, it's been about a month and I've been saving one of them before I add rosin to it so I can show you the difference uh, because if you can see horsehair before it has any rosin on it, it can help you to understand a couple things. First of all, it can help you learn to visually recognize when your bow might need rosin and also it might help you learn how to know when you need a rehair. Um, also, I'm going to play on it to show you what it sounds like when it has no rosin and that's also going to illustrate how to recognize maybe orally when your bow might need rosin. So first let me show you the one with no rosin on it and then I'll compare them side by side. When it doesn't have rosin on it, it's kind of dirty dishwater looking. It's it's off white um, and it gliss glistens and it's shiny and it reflects the light. If you're under a nice bright light and you can glance down it kind of obliquely, you'll see shininess and reflective, almost plastic looking. So hopefully in this lighting you can recognize and see some of the shininess, especially at the tip. It's very, very much off-white. Do you see how off-white that looks? When a bow, when, a, when horse hair has rosin on it, it looks nice and white and chalky. So let me show you the one with rosin on it. And it's dull. When it has rosin on it, it's just kind of dull and white and chalky. Now let me show you the two side by side. The one on the, the bottom here doesn't have any rosin on it. This one has the rosin on it. Can you see the difference? Let me zoom in on this, let it focus. Very important that you catch a glimpse of the glisteny, dirty dishwater look because that's what your horse hair starts to look like when you've when you've gone too long without rosining your bow. The whole idea of rosin is to deposit powder underneath the horsehair cells. Uh, if you've ever seen it under a microscope, the cells of the hair shaft are just scalloped up and down the shaft and they lay flat, completely flat. And the idea is when, as you're rosining it, lifts up the horsehair cells that, and makes little barbs and it packs rosin powder underneath each hair cell so that it's lifted and creates a little barb which grabs the string and that's what makes the sound. But as you play, the rosin dust flies out and it gets dislodged and the barb slowly starts to go back down again. And as you wear out your horsehair, then the ability for each of those hair cells to, to pack rosin into it gets less and less. It holds it less long and it holds less of it. So as you start noticing the times between when you need to rosin, as those times get shorter and shorter, then you're, you know that you're probably getting due for a rehair. I can make a rehair last almost a year. I'm, I'm a professional player and I play a lot and I play hard, um, but I nurse it along as much as I can. But by the time a year is up, I'm absolutely desperate for a rehair. So that's for a professional player who plays a lot. And it depends on your personal style of playing. If you're a very delicate player, you probably won't blow through the horse hair as fast. Students, could probably make a rehair last a year or two easily. Some people will disagree with me on that, but I don't like throwing money down the drain. So let me show you what the, the rosinless hair sounds like. And you'll see, hopefully you'll hear, it's because all of the cells are completely flat. There's nothing packed under them to lift them. Okay, and it's really slippery. It's sliding all over the place because it's got no grit, no grip. Let me show you just to prove to you that I'm not faking it. That's the one with the rosin on it. 
So how much should you rosin? That's a very subjective question. I tell my students approximately for every hour that they play, they should rosin about four swipes. And I don't like to rosin in long swipes because it doesn't, doesn't work the rosin into those little barbs. I like to do short scrubby motions. So for every hour of playing, I have my students go one, two, three, four. And then they move up one, two, three, four. Move up one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. I'm not pressing very hard right now because I just rosined this and I don't want to overload it with rosin because then it's just really crusty. It won't hurt anything, but it just, I don't want my strings getting all crusty. So, uh, a pro and that's approximate. I mean, it's gonna be personal and you're gonna develop your own preferences. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but I don't count one, two, three, four. I count one, two, three, four. So count it however you want that you might count that as eight. I count it as four going back and forth. Okay. So hopefully that gives you a little guidance on when it's time to rosin, but mostly you need to learn to recognize the sound of slippery hair, the feel of the loss of control when you've got no grip and the look of the dirty dishwater, shiny, plasticky looking hair when the rosin starts to get depleted from those those little hair cells. Okay, so now let's talk about how do you know when it's time to rehair. Um, so you can rehair because you wore the hair out and it's shiny or it's no longer holding the rosin and you're having to rosin more and more and oftener and oftener. Um, but there's other times when you need to rehair and that's when you've broken a lot of hairs and that's when you see that awful chunk missing and then your ferrule is all exposed and it could gouge your violin it's bad news um hair can break just from being dry and brittle i've gotten bad rehair jobs where the hair was obviously old had been sitting in a shop too long and it it broke very easily you could have cheap hair that's not durable to begin with so there's factors that can cause your hair to break it can also fall out of either the tip or out of the ferrule due to faulty installation or just a breakdown of the things that hold it in place. It's tied up in this complex contraption under here. So it's, it's tied in place, but sometimes if things start to get loose, then the hair just starts falling out. Um, and the thing that makes it get loose is if you are in the habit of pulling your hair out by the root every time you break one, if you're pulling it out by the root, you're taking away some of the wedging power from the frog or the tip. So instead of plucking it out by the root, when you break a hair, have clippers in your violin case and clip it, but leave the nubby wedged in there so you don't lose any nubbies. <laughs> so it stays really tightly wedged. That'll help your hair last a lot longer. And sometimes you just get a bad install and the, the wood is not holding the hair in place. And hopefully you can go back and ask them to redo it, but mistakes happen. Okay, um, the most common cause of broken hair though is too forceful of playing or not tightening your bow enough and you can tell if you're one of these people if your hair is always breaking about right here if you've always got about a five inch piece at the frog and the rest is at the tip you're clipping your hair between the stick and the string watch I'm gonna loosen it I'm not really gonna do this because it's a brand new hair job and I want to keep all my hair so I'm gonna loosen my bow on purpose and when you're playing if you're playing forcefully right about here is where the hair can get pinched between the stick and the string and it'll clip right through it like a pair of scissors especially on chords when students are learning how to do chords i don't know how many hairs i broke learning chords but you force it right here you shouldn't force but we do and um that clips the hair so the way to eliminate that problem is to tighten your bow more and to learn not to force too hard on chords and on aggressive passages. 
Okay, I hope this was helpful and I really hope we got a good shot of that horse hair without rosin because I'm about to rosin it up now and show you how to rosin brand new horse hair. So it takes a ton to get it started. I use my Perostro Olive, it's my preference. It's a dark rosin, it's really great for a desert climate. Um, and you gotta work it in to little sections like so. So you're just gonna scrub at the frog. Cover the ferrule, the metal part, the ferrule, with your thumbnail so that your rosin runs into your thumbnail, not into the metal, which will break your rosin all to little bits. And I really work it right down close to the ferrule because I don't like any dirty dishwater hair showing. I'm very fussy. And it is putting dust all over my thumbnail and that's okay. I rosin the side. I rosin the other side. You see how nice and white and shiny that is? And then you see where it stops. <laughs> it's, it's almost a, a clear line stops right there. So then you'll do the same with other little spots. Less, I, I don't need as much when I get far away from the frog. That's almost enough right there. And I tilt the bow back and forth so that I get both sides of the hair. And you rotate the rosin, the cake of rosin. Do you see how I'm going in little circles? And that prevents you from making that wasteful T cut in your rosin where you've gone clear down to the plastic and then you've got four corners of unusable rosin. This way you wear it down evenly by rotating it. Eric McAllister taught me that trick. Okay, and so then I'm going to keep doing that. At the tip, I'm going to do the same thing as at the frog. I'm going to really work it in clear up to even right here by the ivory where I don't really play. I, I go clear to the tip, but you don't go over the ivory. And I tip side to side to side to side till it loses that dirty dish water. And it looks nice and dull and white and chalky. And I'll show you. You can see the difference. So then I'll do the same thing with the rest of the hair. Then after I'm done, this is just after the first time I rosin horse hair, I gently tap it. I loosen the horse hair, tap it gently just to shake out any detritus and any debris and to distribute the powder down to the hairs below. And then I tighten it back up again and then for the first few hours of playing, it's going to be crusty. So you'll want to leave yourself several hours to break in a rehair job um, before a big performance or something. And then I think I've said everything I need to say. Uh, if you have any questions, post them below. And thanks for watching.